This is an exclusive hot air. Welcome, welcome all to this episode of the Why to How podcast, where we explore adventures in STEM. After an amazing Canada-wide science fair a few months ago, I wanted to check in with our Platinum and Best Project Award winners to learn more about their science fair projects and the adventures they've had along the way. Today, I'm joined by Arushi Nath, a grade 8 student from Toronto and our Junior Best Project Award Innovation winner at Canada-wide Science Fair 2022 for her project, Strengthening Planetary Defense, Detecting Unknown Asteroids Using Open Data, Math and Python. Arushi, welcome to the podcast. Did you want to start us off by introducing yourself a bit and briefly explaining what your project is about? Sure. So um, as you already said, um, my name is Arushi and I'm a grade 8 student from Toronto. I'm really interested in astronomy, maths, and science, and for the past seven, eight years, I have been using my interest to create different projects. Um, and one of my projects I'm going to be presenting today is my project for the Canada Wide Science Fair, Strengthening Planetary Defense, Detecting Unknown Asteroids Using Open Data, Maths, and Python. So the goal of this project was to actually detect unknown asteroids. So how did I go about this? I took images from four robotic telescopes located all around the world. They were located in Canada, Spain, United States, and Australia. They were located worldwide so I could get a full sky coverage. I then choose these images and um, to find unknown asteroids, I had to first eliminate all known objects. So to do so, I had to first find all known stars and all known asteroids. So to do so, I queried two open data sets. First is the Gaia Star Catalog data set, which gave me all the, the positions of all the stars. And the second is the NASA Horizon data set, which gave the predicted positions of all the asteroids. By putting both data sets in my image, I was able to find all known asteroids and stars. And then I created custom masks to remove all these objects, which left me with the unknown objects. I reported these findings to the Minor Planet Center database once I was able to find possible asteroid candidates. Cool. <laughs> what a cool project. Uh, and I mean, especially timely considering NASA's just done the DART mission uh, and there's a bunch of things happening in space right now that uh, it's, it's definitely a, a, a topic of interest for a lot of people around the world right now. Uh, did you want to tell me where did this idea come from? Where did, why, why asteroids? Why? So um, since a very young age, I've always been interested in astronomy. Like when I was four or five years old, I remember in the night just looking up at the sky, trying to identify patterns in the stars, which I later found out were different constellations. And then um, one or two years later, um, we got our first telescope. And I've spent countless nights since then just observing through a telescope, looking at planets, looking at stars, looking at clusters, and sketching what I see. And um, as my interest in astronomy grew, I started looking at different communities that are also um, astronomy related. And that's where I found out about the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. And um, here in Toronto, they have monthly meetings where different astronomers or citizen scientists present about their astronomy projects. And I started attending some of those meetings and eventually actually started presenting my own findings to those meetings. And I found it was just a really great community to be talking to people, learning from them and sharing my knowledge. And um, I continued um, this interest in astronomy. And I always believed that the best way to learn about a subject is to make projects, which is why I've started also creating astronomy related projects. And um, I also, um, for my Canada Wide Science Fair project, I wanted to merge all my interests together, which is why I knew I definitely had to have astronomy inside the project. But I also have other interests. Like for example, I've been learning to code in Python for the last four or five years. So I definitely wanted to have lots of coding involved in my project. And I'm also really interested in maths. Like um, there's, I of course do maths at school, but I also do maths at home and stay always like one or two steps ahead of my school because I just found that the subject amazes me so much and what I can find out with math. And um, I want to combine all these three topics in my, in my science fair project which is why I decided to have Finding Unknown Asteroids, because I thought it took all my um, interests together nicely. It's a great way to go around deciding on a science fair project. I, I love that. I love that you're combining all your different interests into one project. And as you said, project-based learning is 
a fantastic way to learn how to learn something about a new topic of yours. How did you go about learning all of this information? You say you do math at home. Um, yeah. So my learning started much before this project. Like, as I mentioned before, the role from the Society of Canada, um, I learned many, um, lots of information about wide telescopes, um, asteroids from there. And um, for coding, um, I started coding on my own, but I've also gone to many tutorials, for example, from Coder Dojo and Kids Code Jeunesse. And those have um, given me access to more resources and I've learned lots more things in coding. Um, and for maths, um, that's one thing I do on my, completely on my own. Like um, I have some textbooks, like grade eight, grade nine maths books, and I just love to keep on learning about maths. Nice, that's good. <laughs> I love I love that you're, you're taking education into your own hands. If it's not, yeah. you're wanting to learn faster than than school. <laughs> um, a lot of free time, what, so excited. Why not learn more? Exactly, exactly. Uh, that's the sort of motivation we, we want from our science fair science fair students. <laughs> Were there certain people that you turned to for support when you were doing this project? Um, this is a great question. And um, during my project, um, I definitely had to reach out to a lot of forums um, while my project was going on. Like, there were some errors that I got. Of course, I tried, like, for days, sometimes even weeks on my own to try to find the answer. But when I was not able to, I reached out to specifically that subject-related forums. For example, for coding issues, I would reach out to a GitHub forum or a Stack Overflow forum. Forum um, for something more astronomy related. Um, there's lots of astronomy softwares that have forums like Astrometrica, and I often reached out to them. And there was a huge community of people always ready to help, and I got many of my answers from there. Um, I also reached out to specific people, um, for example, from a different star databases, and they allowed me to get specific um, answers to the specific questions I was asking, and it helped me move my project on much faster. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about who you reached out to and, and how you reached out to them? How did you go about finding who to reach out to and, and what did you say to them? That's a great question. And I'm going to mention um, um, one person I reached out to was Christina Thomas, and she is a lead in the investigation of the dark mission. And um, I, was, I sent her a message, just told her about what my current project was and asked if I could like have a Zoom meeting to talk to her a bit about like her project and how it could relate to mine. And um, I was able to get like a 20, 30 minute Zoom call with her where I shared about my project and asked her questions about what research she was doing. And she also gave me some pointers on my project and what I could do. And I actually managed to include some of them in my project. Cool. I love that. <laughs> yeah, especially reaching out to someone who is doing something directly in, your, in, the, in the same field as, as you're doing your science fair project. Um, do you want to talk to us about what you discovered? When you did the science fair project, what, 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 did, what did you end up discovering? What was your conclusion? Um, great. So um, my project, um, so my project was about finding unknown asteroids. Um, so I fed it um, lots of images, um, about 40 images um, from different places I got. Um, one of them was the International Asteroid Search Campaign. So I signed up and I was able to get lots of images of the sky from them. And um, the aim was basically to be able to find um, uh, unknown asteroids and use the images. So my um, algorithm was able to find around 20 possible asteroid candidates from those images. Um, um, I manually looked through all of them just to make sure they were correct. And about 10, 10 15 of them I let pass through and I submitted them to the Minor Planet Center database where they look for new asteroids. And three of my um, asteroid detections got selected as preliminary asteroids. Um, that's the first detection of a possible unknown asteroid. They didn't move on further because there were no other observations of these asteroids in the next coming weeks. Um, but I was able to get three preliminary asteroids. That's really and, cool. Um, one more thing I did is that since I believed in sharing all my data and so on, um, I've cre I created a GitHub account and I posted um, all the code to my um, to my project. Um, so that other youth and citizen scientists from around the world can recreate my project with their own images. That's really cool. And it, it's not something you hear of uh, quite often, but I mean, obviously I'm a big proponent for open source and especially the open yeah, source framework. Yeah, 
Were there certain things you had to consider before publishing to GitHub? Did you have to modify your project at all? Talk us through that that process of actually uploading it to GitHub and what, what your thought process was along the way. Um, sure. So um, I had coded everything in a Jupyter Notebooks. So we're, they were already in that format that I could submit it to GitHub. Um, of course, I had to remove a few things like um, my folder names and so on and replace them with um, like put your text here um, just for privacy reasons. Um, but I included most of my code. Of course, I've moved, I, I cleaned it up a bit um, so that like my trial and error codes were not there. Um, and I put basically the best version of the code that I could get. Um, and yeah, but mostly it's the original code that I had. Nice. And why did you decide to submit it to something like GitHub? Um, well, I love sharing all my projects open source and I love presenting them to different people. For example, um, all my projects, I've done lots of outreach. Um, I presented them at maker fairs. I've given presentation, um, even interviews like this one. And um, I thought sharing them online on somewhere like GitHub is another way to show uh, my project and share it with other people around the world. Nice. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Uh, we've got a question from Prabnor in, in Discord wanting to know how long did it take you to do your project? So from when you first sort of had the had the very first idea, how long did it then take you to start putting together and actually testing things? And then how long it took you to finalize it? Yeah, that's a great question. So in whole, it took, it took me around um, nine, 10 months. So um, this is from starting to get the idea, then reaching out to different people, seeing if they approved of my idea, um, then actually starting to meet the code, um, um, I got a lot of errors along the way, and I think my code actually changed a lot. Like um, my first goal and my end result was very different. Mm -hmm. And I found out some limitations during my project, um, which I had to take it into account. And I think always during my projects, the, what I imagined the results to be and the end results are always very different. Um, I definitely had a huge scope of ideas. Like uh, my idea was like to feed hundreds of thousands of images to the data set and to get um, lots of results. Um, but I think this for my science fair project, I focused more on creating the algorithm um, and testing it on some selected images. Um, but yeah, it took me around 10 months, lots of difficulties along the way. Mm, so you sort, of started off, you sort of started off with proof of, per, uh, proof of, proof of concept, I guess, before actually, you know, yeah. sending hundreds of thousands of photos through something that you're not sure works in the first place. So yeah, yeah, we've learned that over the last couple of interviews that there's with, with the other, uh, the other project winners from Candle White Science Fair 2022 is that, you know, yeah. test fast and test often is, is a very good way to get, to go about build, building, building yeah, a project. And, and that's how you get a, a good solid project as opposed to maybe this is a good idea, but I don't really know because I haven't tested it properly yet. Yeah. Everything changes along the way. Yeah, exactly. So do you want to talk to me about some of these challenges that you faced along the way then as well? Um, what what Definitely. were these mishaps and limitations you discovered? Yeah. Um, so um, in our project, um, to find unknown asteroids at the first overlay all known objects onto my image. So this is known stars and known asteroids. So I was able to collect the databases or collect um, the information about stars and asteroids, and I was able to overlay them onto my image. But now when it came to eliminating these objects, I at first decided to create like um, a circle blot on top of these images, um, each having the same radius, like for example, 10 pixels. Um, but I found out this did not work at all because some um, stars were very big, some were very small, which means that um, having the same size mass did not work out. So it took me a long time to um, create custom mass for each of these objects. So custom mask, meaning like smaller objects would have a smaller radius as a mask, while bigger objects would have a bigger radius as a mask. Um, and um, I basically, to find this radius, I found um, the mean and standard deviation of the pixels inside the um, object and um, seeing if there was um, more pixels that I would create a bigger um, mask. If there was less pixels, I would create a smaller mask. And I also used the weighted mean to help me find um, these radiuses. And um, I had to test out different methods um, to find um, these custom masks. Not all of them worked out. Um, but eventually, I was able to create um, custom masks that fit um, each of the objects. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think that's one of the biggest challenges I faced. Um, it was unexpected, 
Um, like I was just thinking of quickly removing these objects and moving on to the next step, but I ended up spending several weeks on that step itself. So yeah. So talk me through the mindset that you went through during that time. So when something doesn't work out for the very first time and you realize you haven't got the results you wanted, how do you reframe? How do you, you know, know to attack the problem as opposed to just giving up and moving on to something different? Um, definitely. So like, um, I had, um, um, the positions of all the objects and this was actually just after facing another huge problem right before um, uh, I can talk about it in more detail if you want later mm -hmm. but after facing that problem I was like okay now I'm going to eliminate these objects and when I tried to code for the first time I was I knew something was wrong like some of, of the bigger objects were getting not covered at all and um, smaller objects lots more was getting covered so I was a bit disappointed because then I realized this extra step I had to do. And at first I was not sure exactly how to go about this. I thought about first manually creating different radiuses based on just the object, but I knew that would be too time consuming. So um, one other thing is I tried to, um, looking for the, at the object, um, I, there's no something that says this is how big the object is or something that puts a boundary around the object. So I had to create that boundary myself um, so I created uh, like a biggest size boundary possible, like a biggest star would maybe be 40 pixels. And based on that, um, I was looking inside that box and I was looking which of these pixels um, are part of the object, which are not. And based on that, I was kind of seeing how big each object was, but that didn't really work out either. Um, so I tried many methods like that one, um, but eventually I found out that finding the weighted mean of the object uh, worked best. Nice. So yeah, quite a few challenges, <laughs> lots of limitations yeah, yeah. as well that you were expecting. Was there like an interesting surprise though, something that caught you off guard while doing this project? Um, well, one thing is um, right after um, overlaying the known stars, I went on to overlaying the known asteroids. Um, so I was not really sure how to go about this because stars are fixed objects and asteroids are always moving objects. So I was not sure how to exactly get the positions of this. And I struggled with this for some time, but I reached out to a forum and they actually gave me um, a database where I could query it using a custom URL. And I thought this was really cool because like with a Python algorithm, I inputted um, all my information into the URL and I was able to create a URL. And it was just amazing because this one actually worked the first time I did it. Like there were no problems while doing it. And I was able to get the position of a known asteroid on my image. That is a nice surprise. <laughs> I love it when things work yeah. out the way you want them to. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I know you mentioned that you had been learning code and learning Python for a little bit. Uh, Thomas is asking in the chat, was this something that you learned like before starting your project? Did you learn it along the way? Were there certain, certain things you needed to learn specifically in Python uh, for this project? That's a great question. So I've been learning Python for four or five years, um, but during the project, I definitely picked up a lot of new Python skills, especially because um, the libraries that I was using in Python for my project were ones that I hadn't used before because they were more astronomy related. Some examples are like AstroPy and AstroQuery, both used um, to find known objects in my image. For example, AstroQuery was using for to query databases, and um, AstroPy I used more for converting um, my observations from right ascension declination onto my image. Um, so I think I definitely learned about those libraries and how to use them, but I was also able to use my past knowledge in my project, which made the process a lot easier. Cool. Yeah, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> uh, can you describe to us what, what you felt when your results became clear, when you got to that conclusion and you, and you discovered that you had actually found you know, three preliminary asteroids that, that weren't known beforehand? Yeah. Definitely. So um, that was like after 10 months of hard work. So I had submitted it to the minor planet database um, through that um, international asteroid search campaign. And I was basically just waiting for the results every day, waiting for that email to pop up saying who detected some preliminary asteroids or anything. And um, a couple of weeks later, um, they sent an email and I saw my name on the list with three different asteroids. And I was really happy because like, um, that passed the first round. Um, and it means that my algorithm actually worked. Um, so that was like a moment like 
after 10 months of hard work, I'm actually able to get these three preliminary asteroids. And um, I was disappointed, of course, when they didn't move on to the next steps, but it showed at least that I was able to get those first three. Mm-hmm. And I can imagine, too, there's not, not too many grade eight students <laughs> submitting asteroids to this campaign. How did it feel? Like, have you have you had much feedback from from the community, for, especially, you know, posting in all of these forums and stuff? Were, were people interested in your project? How did they feel about you being such a young scientific researcher? Definitely. So th- people were definitely interested on my project. Like, once I found three preliminary asteroids, I, like, shared it on some of my um, forums that have been um, asking questions about some astronomy groups that I was in, including the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada Toronto Meetings Group. And they were all really supportive um, and congratulated me. And I think it was amazing that I was able to form this community during my project because some of these people I would have never met if I had not done this project. Mm, exactly, yeah. It's a, it's a wonderful how. Yeah. How the scientific community can just come together and just be so supportive, especially when it is students doing really, really cool scientific research projects. Yeah, thanks. How did it feel then when you heard your name called out as a Best Project Award winner at Canada Wide Science Fair? Um, that's a great question. So um, I was just um, on the couch with my family sitting down and we were watching, um, we were all together watching the award ceremony. Mm-hmm. And um, I was actually really happy when I saw my name, I had gotten a gold medal. And I was really excited. Um, And then I also found out I got um, an award from the RASC, Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. um, And I was getting a telescope. And that made me really excited. And when I was looking at the final names, I I was like, yeah, my awards are done now. And I was already really happy. But then when I heard my name, I was like, I cannot believe this. Like, this was my first time participating in the Canada Wide Science Fair. And I was definitely not expecting to get such a high award. I mean, it truly is a wonderful wonderful achievement so a huge congratulations from all of us here at new science canada uh is that your telescope in the background there the one that you won from oh uh, yeah that actually is the telescope that i got nice how's it going you're using I'm it all using the time to observe. yes i mean last i actually used it last night too um it's a really great telescope i'm able to observe many objects yeah something we don't talk about enough but some of the awards are really cool <laughs> yeah and really useful yeah really useful i'm glad to see you still using it um so clearly you have this wonderful passion for astronomy, for math, Python, uh, scientific research in general. Where, where did this passion for science research come from, especially at such a young age? I mean, you've been learning coding for four years and you're, you're a grade eight student. Definitely. So um, I think one of my first exposures to science and stuff was when I visited the Ontario Science Centre. Um, it's a science centre in Ontario. And um, I looked at all the exhibits I was really fascinated, um, and I convinced my parents to let me let them take me there every weekend. And eventually, um, that's um, from the Ontario Science Centre is where I found out about the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada because they were hosting their monthly meetings inside the Ontario Science Centre. And I was really curious and listened to one of those or two of those meetings, and I think it just sparked my interest more. And um, as I grew older, um, I became more mature, and then found out about more. Um, different organizations and just decided to keep on pursuing this curiosity um, since I had lots of free time. School wasn't occupying too much time at least, um, especially in elementary school. So I thought, why not spend my free time on doing something that I like? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great answer. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite part then about science fair and doing science, science projects? Um, well, when I had honestly started this project, I wasn't really sure if I was going to use it for the science fair project um, or if the project was even going to continue and reach its final stage. Um, I, but once like I was in the middle of the project um, and I saw the science fair date coming up, I was like, why not submit it for the Toronto Science Fair, which was the first science fair. Um, and that was just um, a wonderful experience. Like I presented my project there and I was really happy when I got a gold medal at the Toronto Science Fair and was able to move up to Canada White Science Fair. Um, I really think um, like... I'm really interested in astronomy and I'm happy that I could use like that subject for my first participation in the science fair. Mm-hmm. What happens next? Are you expanding on the same project? Are you going to do something different? Are you doing science fair project for this year again? Um, that's a great question. So I'm definitely going to be participating in the science fair again this year. Um, for what I'm doing next, so I'm keeping the planetary defense. So right now, um, as you might know, um, the DART mission, or the Double Asteroid Redirection Test mission, um, launched and successfully impacted 
um, the Diddy Moss system on September 26th. And um, I wanted to actually measure the changes of um, the system during this impact, which is why for the past couple of months, um, I've been getting lots of observations of the Diddy Moss, the Diddy uh, Moss um, binary system before the impact, so I can get like the solid rotational period of the object. So using um, telescopes located mostly in Australia and um, Chile, I've been um, observing this asteroid. Um, so one of the different things about these images is that unlike um, getting images for my past um, science fair project, here um, I had to take longer observations of consecutive images. Uh, for example, like two hours long um, observations, maybe getting 100 images. And this was needed so that um, I could perform um, differential photometry on my observations, which give, gives me the rotational or um, the rotational period of the asteroid. Um, so now that the DART mission has impacted, I'm going to be starting to take um, observations of the Diddy Moss system again. I'm actually just waiting for the moon to go back down to below 50% so I can get better observations. But um, after that, I'm going to start observing um, the Diddy Moss system to see if I can measure any changes that the DART uh, mission caused. Cool. Well, I can't wait to see what this project looks like going forward. <laughs> I mean, I think I think yeah, we're all, yeah, there's a couple of us in the chat as well. Yeah, we, we all uh, paid very close attention to the DART mission and we were watching it live on, on YouTube at the time. So it's definitely something that's that's caught our attention. Yeah, one of the biggest um, missions in the past couple of years. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, do you think there's something about you or your mindset that makes you such a successful student? Like why why you of all people did you win a best project at Canada Wide Science Fair? Well, to be honest, I'm not too sure. Like, um, I was pursued by special. Like, um, I guess lots of people are interested, like, in other stuff. Um, not many kids at a, such a young age um, go towards this sti science astronomy um, sector. Um, but I think um, I just got the opportunity to start at a really young age, which is why I've been able to do so much yet. Cool. <laughs> I love how humble you are. <laughs> I'm just trying to make more people like you. <laughs> we want everyone to do the best that they can. <laughs> yeah. Do you think, well, do you have any advice on how students can maintain their motivation while doing a science fair project? Because, I mean, as you say, there's a lot of challenges along the way and it's taking you, t it took you 10 months to do this one project. How do you, how do you keep that motivation going the whole time? Yeah, definitely. So um, for all others who want to participate in the Canada Wide Science Fair, it's really essential to actually find a topic that interests you. Because like, for example, I spent 10 months and if I was not interested in astronomy, I probably would have given up the project after one or two months. But since I was actually interested in the project that I was doing, I was able to keep persevering and keep going through all the challenges that I faced um, to actually finally find a solution. So I think it's really important to merge your interest with whatever project you're doing. Um, and make sure that you really you're actually into the project, um, so that you can get the best results possible. Great advice. Great advice. <laughs> uh, Thomas in the chat wants to know who are your role models in the field of astronomy. Um, that's a great question. Um, I don't have any specific role models um, because, like, um, they definitely keep on changing um, based on what the current events are happening. Um, but I think one of my role models from a couple of years ago are the Canadian astronauts. So this is um, Jeremy Hansen, um, Jennifer City, and Joshua Kirtrick. And I had the opportunity to meet all of them um, on my visit to the Canadian Space Agency headquarters. And it was really amazing talking to them. Like um, Jennifer City um, um, loves combustion, um, I learned. And um, Joshua had flown over 30 um, different planes. Um, so it was just really interesting learning about um, them. And I think I really looked up to them at that point because like, what they were doing was my goal, and I just wanted to keep learning. Mm -hmm. How was it exploring kind of the CSA headquarters? What was that experience like? Tell me all about it. Um, that was amaz an amazing experience because I actually got the chance to explore it after winning um, on the Canadian Space Apps Hackathon in 2017. Um, so as the prize, I was able to visit the headquarters. And I remember I took a train there, and then once I arrived, like, um, I got to explore all parts of it, the rovers that they were making, hear about what tests they were doing, their upcoming missions, and the highlight was, of course, meeting the astronauts. And I just thought it was, like, a wonderful experience to be able to view this place and see um, the headquarters up close. 
and I learned a lot of stuff and satisfied my curiosity on what the CSA actually was. I can imagine, yeah, what a wonderful experience. Cool. <laughs> Congrats on winning that hackathon yeah. too. Do you think is there any is that well I guess I guess the question is what's what's a reason that all students should be doing science fair projects? Because I know teenagers are busy, you got lives, you got social lives, as you say, students are yeah. you know, other kids have other things they focus on, but but why should kids be doing science fair projects? Um, that's a great question. So um, definitely if um, you're not at all interested in science and so on, I wouldn't expect um, other kids to be doing science fair projects. But I think um, science fair is a great way to um, expand your knowledge um, based on subject that you're interested on and um, also um, do a task before a deadline. Uh, because for, in my case, I definitely remember trying to finish um, everything, the write-ups, the PowerPoint presentations, and especially the project itself right before the deadline. And um, I think the deadline gave me motivation to keep on working. Like I remember spending late nights um, just trying to figure out how to do it. And But I think for other, other students, uh, it's definitely a great experience and very rewarding if you win something. But even if you don't win something, it's um, the experience that you get looking at other projects, um, presenting your project, and just um, the community that you build up of other youths around um, your city or your country who are also making science fair projects. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally, totally agree. Totally agree. What great advice. Um, do you have do you have a, a dream now for when you get older? I mean, you said before that Canada Space Agency was you know was a goal of yours. Is it, is it still the same goal? Has has that changed in the in the past couple of years? Um, well, I'm not um, too sure what I want to be when I'm older. It definitely is something related to astronomy and science, mm-hmm. but there are so many jobs, so many new jobs will come up, so many new positions that I'm just not sure what to do yet. I guess I'll find out with time. I mean, I don't even know what I want to do yet, so <laughs> so welcome to the crowd. Yeah, I wouldn't expect yep. you to have everything planned out right now because, as you say, life changes so quickly. And you know, there's a statistic I'm just going to make up off the top of my head, but it's something like 80% of jobs, you know, that don't even exist now. 80% of the jobs yeah. in 10 years time don't even exist now. So plenty of time to figure it out. But I imagine astronomy and space are pretty high up there. I can imagine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so a big question for you then. Why is STEM itself important? Um, that's a great question. So it's very definitely a very broad question. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I think um, STEM science is important um, because that's how we have progressed over the last years. Um, Science is why we have not been hit by an asteroid yet, unlike dinosaurs. Um, I think it's also really important. It helps us understand the universe, um, space especially. Um, I think it's just um, really useful for understanding the stuff. Um, Like there's lots of things that we would not have found out. We wouldn't have cars, we wouldn't have anything if we had not used STEM. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, STEM is the foundation of all things we know. (laughs) Definitely. Uh, do you have any advice for people looking to get involved in science fair this year? Um, I think just start on a project. Like it doesn't need to be a big project. Um, it's just something that you like, um, that follows your interests, and something you're curious about. Um, because um, you don't need to necessarily win the science fair, but it's just creating that project, um, having fun along the way, learning new stuff that's really important, and participating in the science fair is just an added experience to the project. So I think just start somewhere and then we'll see how it goes. Exactly. Yeah. It's not all about the prizes and the awards. It's, it's, it's not about yeah. the destination. It's about the journey along the way. Definitely. Well, Arushi, thank you so much for being a guest on today's episode. That's a perfect place to end it because that is such wonderful advice. And this whole conversation has just been full of inspiration, motivation, and gems of advice that I hope many of our listeners continue to reflect on as they think about their own adventure in STEM. Uh, so again, Congratulations from all of us here on your incredible achievement. It is a fantastic uh, science fair project that you put together. Uh, I can't wait to see what you do next and hopefully see you at Canada White Science Fair 2023. Thanks. It was great fun talking here. Okay. Thank you all for joining us in this episode of Why to How, a podcast where we explore adventures in STEM. If you liked this podcast, consider leaving us a like on our social media. It's just ysc.sjc on Facebook and Instagram, ysc underscore sjc on Twitter, 
or join our Discord. It's Purple STEM Wave. You can find the link on our website, youthscience.ca. Please leave us a comment with your favourite part of the interview and let us know your own thoughts on the topics we discussed. And if you liked it, please do share a link to the podcast or YouTube video with friends who you think would love to follow along. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review as it really does help us reach more people. We'll have another amazing guest for you on the next episode, so stay tuned for more. Until then, have a wonderful day and stay curious.